Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. I am Corey Barker and I am joined by a special guest. If you remember from the last episode, we had a very special guest on. RC is with us now. We've replaced him with Matt. Matt is fired from the previous show because of what he did. And RC is going to tell you what he did that messed him up. Can I be honest with you, Corey? Yes, no, I would like you to... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we've been in a little bit of an Argo kick right now. Oh, yeah, so exactly. we're, just, we're just constantly quoting Argo. But this right here is... Craig. Craig. Not Greg. Not Greg. With not, a G. Yeah. Not, not Greg. Greg, as it was mentioned in the last show, yes. I'm sitting there and I'm just like, we came in and they're like, is it Greg or Craig? It's McCormick, right? Yeah. Mc yes. Craig McCormick. So I we're like, yes. all right, we're good. But anyway, so we wanted to be able to do that. So right. he came, he flew all the way by himself on his own plane, all the way over here from Shanghai, and we're just like... No oh. more cheesy thumbs for you, by the way. Yeah. No more cheesy yeah. thumbs. He's, he does a lot of cheesy thumbs. Hey, Dave He's a friend of Dave. Oh, oh, right, so. oh, I see what it is. But over there on the right, we have Mr. P. Collins. Mr. P. So. How's it going? Some people call me Keith. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. I'm known as Pete Collins. How's it going, guys? Good to see you. And now that we have set the record straight... That's right, we just have to... Kind of just go right Got that there. out of the way. Thanks. We are brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals that bring you Photoshop User Magazine right here. Our wedding issue. And our spectacular wedding issue. I was really excited about that. It was, it was one of those things where it's like, it's been a bit since we've actually worked on something that, that was kind of thematic throughout mm -hmm. the entire thing. And, exactly. you know, being at the WPPI conference and talking mm -hmm. about that, we were like, it'd be a good idea for us to kind of just have something that's all Photoshop related, but specific to the wedding industry. Exactly. Yeah. Now, obviously, like if you're looking at this, right, and you're looking at this from a wedding standpoint and you go, well, I don't shoot weddings, a lot of the stuff that we did in this is something that you can apply to anything else. You can apply it to portraits, you can apply it to scenes, sure. you can apply it to that. Well, even the Down and Dirty Tricks I, I did in this one is geared toward wedding stuff. You know, effects you can do to photographs and, you know, different right. wedding images, stuff like that. So, sure. um, where are we? No, we're, we're, this is our last episode of the season. That's right. It is the season finale. We're going to be taking right. a little break after this. But uh, with us today is, uh, of course, RC is That's right. with us. Yep. I'm Where pretty excited been? about that. I'm running around. I'm doing a lot of tours. I'm doing uh, some stuff over uh, at Kelby Training Live. Mm -hmm. So I've been just kind of moving around, just Kelby traveling around. all yeah, over the place. Some coming up. You were just here in Tampa. I was just here Last in Tampa. Week, yeah. uh, I have. It, it's basically the Photoshop CS6 tour. So it's for photographers that are out there that kind of want to learn, you know, the, the latest and greatest in CS6, as mm -hmm. well as kind of techniques and tricks and all that kind of stuff. If you want to see it, you can go ahead and just go over and see it over at KelbyTrainingLive.com. There's a couple of dates that are coming up, but I won't. Bore you with that. We'll get to that a little bit later. All right. Um, actually, before we get to your tutorial, because you are up first. Oh, okay. Are, but uh, just want to. We have another ebook offer this week. I want to talk about. It's a limited time offer, forty percent off the Adobe Masterclass Photoshop by. I'm, I'm, I'm going to butcher this I, name. I knew you were you. scared. I can yeah. see you scared <laughs> yeah. running up to How it. How about this? How about I do it? Yeah, Bar go ahead. A Barian X Pirello. A Barian X Pirello. There we go. The ebook price is twenty seven ninety nine, but the Kelby TV price with forty percent off is sixteen seventy nine. That's a very specific number. Yeah, Barian X is a phenomenal interviewer. Mm -hmm. If yep. you haven't seen, if you haven't seen his stuff, he's a great, great interviewer. He's got mm -hmm. a great voice. Not not just like his voice because yeah. his voice is really. His really voice good. is awesome. His voice is awesome. But on top of that, how he communicates with people mm -hmm. on on a photographic level with the candid frame on his website I think he's really really good so I'm always interested to see anything that he's working on and this time he's doing some Photoshop stuff and I'm I, I think it's gonna be really neat absolutely and if you're interested in uh, taking advantage of that discount it's coupon code Kelby TV and that offer ends on March 31st. All yeah. right, we're going to dive right in, and RC's going to kick things off with something. What have you had? Yeah, you know what? I, I figured one of the things that I wanted to do was just kind of work on a project, just just a special project. Like, I've mm -hmm. always come up with tips and tricks and ideas, and I figured and then in the process of working on this, th there would be some, some learning to be had. Sure. So I went to a farm over the weekend, oh. and I was taking a look at this, and there were some baby goats, right? And now... Here's something that I think is really weird. You see this? This is on a Mac, right? You see how this is not as saturated? Mm -hmm. But if you come over here and you hit the space bar and you quick look it, 
quite different. Right? Quite different. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of weird. So I have a series of pictures that I want to work with, and I figured we could talk a little bit about syncing. Now, when you're working with images, let's say inside of Photoshop, you click on File, you click on Open, and I'm going to go and I'm going to select these four images that I want to work with. I'll get in and I'll click on OK, and that's going to bring up all of these images inside of Camera Raw. Now, I'm a big fan of trying to make sure that we have all of this stuff kind of work as, as fast as possible. I'm not looking for, I don't want to spend a lot of time playing around with stuff. I want Photoshop and Camera Raw and all that stuff to do the heavy lifting for me. So to that end, I have Camera Raw open and rather than edit one picture and save it and save it and save it, I'm going to try to take advantage a lot about synchronization features. Mm -hmm. So right here, I have this image and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. I want to be able to take it, and let's just say that I do it for the purposes of the camera, right? So right now, the purposes, if I'm looking at the screen that you guys are looking at, it looks a little red in that one area. So what I would like to do is I'd like to kind of bring down the vibrance of that. I'll bring it down just a tiny bit so that it looks a little bit better for you guys on that screen. Now, I know that I'm going to have to do that to this image here. I'm going to have to do it to this image, and I'm going to have to do it to this image as well. So. Instead, what I would rather do is I'd rather just select this one here, and right at the very, very top, you can select on an option called Select All. Clicking on that, that'll select all of the images inside of that series, and from there, I can go ahead and select the option called Synchronize. Now, you'll notice that on the right, what I did was Vibrance, so I'm going to click on this Synchronize, and I can uncheck all of these and just take what I did from a Vibrance standpoint. So I'll go ahead and I'll find Vibrance, that's what I did. I click OK, and you'll notice that it passes all of that information over to those images. Mm -hmm. So that alone I think is pretty good. If you click on Open Images, it opens it in Photoshop. If you click on Done, it saves all of those changes and it puts all of those changes inside right. of that DNG file that mm -hmm. I'm working with. Now, RC, I'm sorry, can I yes, ask sir. a question? Yes, sir. Once you hit that Synchronize, if you make any more changes Will it change them automatically? No, you'd have to set it. You'd have to set it to be able to do some sort of auto synchronization. It's not. It, it wouldn't be necessarily something that would happen right off the bat, but it could be something that you could set up where you could have it kind of auto synchronize. So you need to think of hitting that synchronize as apply all. Right. Insta and instead of everything you do to one is going to be changed to everything else from this point on, it's like whatever you've done to this one, now apply to those. Patch it to the other things. Gotcha. Now, you can do auto stuff, and it's something that I tend to do a lot over on the Lightroom side. Right. Light in, in Lightroom, like let's say, for example, right here are the same pictures inside of Lightroom. Right. If you're taking a look at this, I have one picture that I have right here, and let's just say that this is the one that I want to work with. I'll switch over to the Develop module, and inside of the Develop module, Let's just say that I do something very basic, right? I'll go ahead and I'll click on this and I'll just increase the exposure. If I command click another one, you'll see that I have an option there at the bottom called sync. That, clicking on that, will let you synchronize a specific amount of whatever it is that you want to do there, right? At that point, I would probably do an exposure change. I wouldn't check all of those. But what's more important is that you could come into this one section and once you hold down the option key, or actually the command key, you'll see, I'm trying to hold down all the keys so that you can see them at the same time. But they're sync by itself. So if you have two images, the first image is the one that you have as the target, the second is the one that you have as a result. Holding down the command key, it turns it into auto sync. And right now, auto sync is turned off. If you turn this on, then what'll happen is you're working on one, let's say that this is the image that I'm working on here. And let's say that I wanna work on all of these other ones here. So this is the first one, and I'm working on all the other ones. If I move this down, you'll see that all of them at the bottom sync. If you move this back up, all of them at the top sync. So there's a great way for you to, you know, if you know that you've shot under a very specific light, this is a good way for you to be able to do that. So. That, now, what, once you do that, will you have to turn auto sync off? Yes. Otherwise, they're Keep always. Keep in gonna mind, change. you're gonna have to make sure that you go over here, and right now you'll see that auto sync is the only thing that's set up. Right, the moment that you select, and you'll see that it still shows up as auto sync. Right, the moment that you select a couple, there's auto sync. Make sure that you go back down here once you have that done, and you're not using auto sync anymore. Click on that, and it brings it right back to just the regular sync thing. So, uh, I thought that was pretty good. Now. I'm just gonna do, let's, I'm here, so let's just go ahead and work on something really quick. I wanna take this one file, I'll go ahead and I'll grab this one here, 
I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna open this image. Now, once I have that image open, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna take these, those other ones because I thought that this image was cool, but I wanted to add some other stuff to it. So how fast can I do that? I'm gonna to go to File, Automate, or actually File Scripts, and I'm gonna to go to Load Files into a Stack. What that does is it takes a series of images and mo puts a series of images inside of layers of one another, rather than try to guess you know, where would we find one, where we'd find another. So I select those images. I don't wanna drag, transform, drag, transform. I wanna put all three of those guys inside of one spot, and then I wanna be able to add an effect to them so that we can kind of move them down. So there's all three of them. I'm gonna click on them, and I'm gonna drag it and move it over here. Once I move it over to this one section, I probably should have the move tool selected. It'll probably help me out a lot here. Move it over here, bring it over, let them go. And now I can transform all three of these, get them exactly where I need. So I'll do that, and now I'll move them at the very, very top. Move one at the top, grab the one at the bottom, slide it over to the bottom. I know that that's the top and the bottom of what I want. Now I can select all three of these and using the move tool, we can go right here at the very top. And what this will do is this will align with the middles or distribute with the middles. Puts them exactly where they need to be. If I want more spaces, I can just bring this down, bring this up. Oh, let's just bring this down. I'm gonna do the same thing one more time. Now there's gaps, but this could be top and bottom. It's probably now not aligned in the exact same spot. What I would recommend for this is shift click, throw that into a group, command A, and now align the group with the whole selection that you have. Now it's even in the middle. The only thing that I would probably add to this is I would probably go over here, take this top one, I would add a stroke, I would add a drop shadow, I would take my stroke, I would make my stroke probably white, and notice I have the drop shadow here. A lot of people don't know that they can do this. You can come over here and you can move the drop shadow rather than try to guess. You can bring it into this one section. I'll decrease the opacity. I don't want to have to do that over and over and over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on the option key right here on this effects and just drag that on top of, right, let's see, hold on the option key, the word effects, drag it down there, drag it down there. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So in just a little bit of time, we can take that one picture and we can actually turn it into something that we can send out. Now at that point, I would just send this out to like MBIX or something sure. like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a standout that they're actually gonna do. So it's, a, it's actually proportionally signed, sized so that they can do the standout and it has like a big block on it so they can just put it in my office. Nice. nice. But anyway, I just figured a whole bunch of tips. I'm always coming in and kind of doing a, well, here's this one thing. I figured I'd take something from start to finish and be able to show how to do that. Very nice. Well, and I love that. The, the whole idea of syncing and auto-syncing can really, if you're not aware of what, what happens, it can frustrate you and it can kill something because all of a sudden you're applying it or you're not applying it. So I love that you showed that because I'm sure a lot of people out there had questions about nice. that. Nice. Now, what do you got over there? What are you, what are you working on over there? Oh, nice throw to me. That's a nice little segue back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Over. Usually because I turn around and I look and I'm like, there's a, there's a highway there. And I'm like, whoa. Well, since it's our, our, our last show, I thought I'd have a little fun. <laughs> I wanted to give, uh, give our viewers something that they could play with because sometimes I believe our best learning happens when we're playing. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that uh, Corey and I love to play around with different things and mm -hmm. figure out how to do them. And this was inspired by my, my kids love these uh, photo search games where one's changed from the other. Yeah. And you have to notice spot what the thing, difference or something. Spot yeah. the difference. Yeah, exactly. And I said, how hard would that be for me to make up some of my own for my kids? Well, wouldn't it be cool to create your own little book of ones that you've you done? Know, I have to say before you, before you do it. Quit interrupting me. I will beat you. But I'm going to say, <laughs> what's funny about those images is sometimes it, it's easier because you can just look for the bad Photoshop. Oh, thing. yeah. You just look for yeah. the bad photo. Exactly. And that's what inspired me. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I think I can do a better job. And this, what this does is it's a great practice to work on your retouching. 
And so what I did is I found, I actually started doing some look, looking through some of my old stock images and I found that uh, the things that worked out the best were stuff with a lot of architectural and, and other repeating patterns and stuff in there because it becomes less obvious when you change things. But so I gave myself the task of creating 10 different changes on this picture that I could then put the two side to side. I could print them up, I could give them to my kids. And it's just great in practicing doing these retouching. And so if you look, uh, I'll give you a little heads up. If you look at my screen, there's before and after. And see, it's easier to see it when I go back and forth like this. But let's go look at what I've done here. I'm going to hide all these. And so we start off, uh, and what I would do is I'd come in, and it's just a, a, a practice for me to do and for you to do is to come in and try to do some things that you could maybe knock something out. I really like this set of windows up here, and I thought what a great place to put some extra windows in. I'm trying to think sneaky, because my kids are pretty sneaky, so I'm trying to figure out how to uh, figure this out. So I simply came in, and with my rectangular marquee tool, came in, created a section around that window, and then hit Command or Control J to create a copy of it. So now if I hold my shift button down, I can just slide this over and it stays pretty much on line and I can put it right in the middle. Now, what would happen normally in some of these books is they would leave it just like this, but I want to hide it because if you look real closely, there is a, we're getting 200%, it's hard to see, but there's a, a solid line there. It doesn't line up too well. So I'm going to come down here, third icon from the left, left create a mask, layer mask with my black paintbrush. I'm just going to come in here with a soft edge. Oh, it helps if I get a decent brush here. All right. So now I was a little bit too big. Come in here and I'm just going to knock out some of this so that it blends in a little bit better. Just hitting the edges of it, get rid of any of those straight lines. So now if we back back out, it starts to fit pretty well. Well, I decided, okay, that looks pretty good. But let's start adding some more. So I just hit, with that layer selected, I just held my Alt or Option button and I just slid and brought that back over here. Now what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you're at least at 100%. I went to 200% just so I can make sure that these line up really well. And so I started doing that and I ended up coming up with the whole set of windows across the side there. It's a little obvious, but yet it looks like it fits in there. So if you're you're not paying attention, that may get you. Then I went with something like, very subtle, if we look down here in this bottom right hand corner, I just used my spot healing brush and hit one little section of this Japanese kanji down here to knock that out. And I'm hoping because it's tucked in the corner, this will really frustrate my kids. All right, that's a little something a little more obvious. And this one took some time, but if you notice, I knocked out that lamp pole right in the middle. And see, some of these seem pretty easy, but this one right here really made you work with the edges of these blurs of these cars and the way these lines came into being. I really had to do a lot of healing brush, spot healing, and clone stamping to get rid of that lamp. Mm -hmm. And so that was a great test to see how good a job I could do. And then we just come into things like the windows back here in the back left. If you look in the very corner. And I noticed on things back here, this was a real good thing to, if you look hard enough, there's still some subtle color changes and color shifts. I'd really need to work on that a little bit more. But that got me thinking about how could I do this? I started out with just a straight healing brush. It gave me some smearing. I had to go to spot healing brush and uh, then the clone stamp tool but you really have to start working one piece after the other. And so then I added a car. Here you see the car under the bridge. I popped that in. That's just a copy of that car there. I threw in, fixed another window up top to the right. Took, added another vent in here. And for some reason, sometimes you'll get a little thing in your video where it seems like the window is moving on me. But there we go, I lined it back up. Another window to be real sneaky over here, just one window in this area right here. And finally, I added an extra little arm to that sign, another sign, and then my favorite one, 
is just to knock out something of these lines here. The whole thing is, is this became just a, a, a test in seeing what I could do to make these things hide, to create something to be fun for my family, but really push me in being able to retouch things. And here's the final thing that I wanted to show you is, now you can take that, create a copy of the first one, create a copy of the second one. And most of the time when you see these, they're side by side, but I actually like them better diagonally. And the reason is, if they're diagonally, your eye can't cheat and go, okay, straight across, straight across, straight across. I like to be extra sneaky with my kids, and if I were to pull this down and make it side by side, then you could compare a lot more easily. Oh, well, there it is, there it is, there it is. But if you create a bunch of pages of images like that, think about it if you did with your own photography, if you did that and gave that away for your nieces and nephews for Christmas or something like that. You've not only done something unique with your photography, but you've also increased your skills, and you've got something tangible that you could get the next generation interested in photography with. You can even so, personalize it. You know, oh, yeah. Pictures there for all your pictures. I was thinking, I'm like, in those white spots, could you put like distractors and things like oh, that? Oh, listen, clown there's that, that, you, to be honest, I had to rein myself in because I really got, you know, you could go to town on this and you could spend hours just being vicious with your kids. Instead of 10, mm. there are 50 changes in here and you got to find them all or you don't get to eat dinner. You know, wow. so just. Just think about how much fun you could have doing this and increasing a, your skills. It's a warm household. There. Yeah, dude, he needs like a <laughs> monocle and a fur cap. <laughs> and, <laughs> and my children will be needing counseling in the next few years, so uh, send cool, me money though. for my counseling. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, um, we're going to take a quick break, but I think RC's got a little tidbit. You yeah, we'll just, add, we'll just add something to that. Yeah. yeah just a little thing. Yep. Yeah. All right, nice. so we're going to... You gonna show that after the break then? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, show, we'll show that. We'll show I thought he was gonna do it now. No, we're gonna take a quick break, come back back. I've got a little something. He's gonna add a little something to what he did a moment ago. Stay with us. We'll be right here. Read the trades. Read the trades. <laughs> quit, is offering me four quit, tips. quit quoting Argo. I have not seen the movie, we, we're, and you're just bothering me. We're torturing Pete because he hasn't seen Argo yet, so he better watch it tonight or else. All I right. ran into a waitress, and she told me, why can't we do something like that? <laughs> exactly. You know what I told her? You know what, you know what I said? Please don't say it. <laughs> This is a... A family show. Family show. Family, family show. show. Okay. All right, here. So We're back. So, yeah. Uh, just a quick finishing thing because it was bugging me. And yeah. I probably was bugging you guys, but it was really bugging me. So here's the picture, right, that we were working with. And right now, the biggest problem that I have with it is look at how much room there is over here on this side compared to where this is. And I feel like this part right here was kind of, it was just choking it. So what I wanted to do was I kind of wanted to give it a little bit more space. Very, very easy thing. All I want to do is just grab this, move this over this way. I figured that gives a little bit more space over here for these I'm images to breathe. Those other pictures right. Much, yeah. So now I can just grab this thing. And I always do it this way. I don't have to, but I'll make a selection like this. And then from here, I can go ahead and go to Edit Content Aware Scale. And then I'll just pull this out. 
There he adds a fourth use for content aware. Yeah. We've had content aware scale twice. Today. Right. I wanted to just have a little bit of a distance between what she was doing there in that one spot and then those three other images. And it looked great when it first started, but then I'm like, ah, oh, I just hate that she was so close. But when again, that's one of those instances where it's perfect use for it because it's a, it's subtle enough in the background anyway. You're not going to notice it, and mm -hmm. it fills it in nicely. And that's where content aware really, uh, really does really, really. Well, really and wouldn't you find most people would grab just a little section of that, but actually grabbing a bigger section and scaling it has less of a chunky effect to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's another great More tip. More data that you're working with there. It's yeah. also a great tip to pay attention. A lot of people will, will get it 85%, but what makes it that extra, I just lost my words. Yeah. Lost my words. But what makes it better He's is paying running. attention to, is there anything that creates visual tension? That's the thing. Right. And, and she, that's was a, the... she was a little too close to that line, and it was, it was encroaching on it. Right. Visual tension, what that means is that two things are coming together, and it's making your eye focus on those and, and not, not letting it breathe. And cool. so you just moved her over, and it Moving. fit. All, things, things again. All things, throughout space. All throughout space. <laughs> the things with lines. <laughs> The, li the lines, and basically, like if you if you want a good idea, anytime that you put an element next to a line, you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you look, the edge of her hair, and this implied line that you have here, basically the reason that it was looking messed up was because this distance was shorter than the distance that we had here. Yeah. So by taking this distance here and here and making it somewhat equal, at least about the same, it's visually more balanced. It balances it out. Yeah, it so that's it. just a compositional Slide thing. Slide it over mm -hmm. and let them see it again. Do a okay. kind of before yeah. and after. Well, you don't have, well. See? Yeah. So there's before. You see how a lot of space, a little space between that implied line. And then if you go after, yes, right. it's a little bit better. Very nice. Yep. So it's a great tip. So. What do you got? Is it my turn? <laughs> yes, it is your turn. Um, what do I have? No, I got, I. Having a lot of fun with video lately. I don't know, I've been going crazy I with video, video clips, you know. And at last, if you remember a couple episodes back, I did um, kind of a cinemagraph type thing. Here's something you can play around with, again, with video clips. I've got a stock video clip, and it's just an electric, you know, little lightning effect as I move the timeline here. And just to give you an idea of what kind of things you can do with this, because what I like about playing with video in Photoshop is that it's Photoshop. You can do a lot of what you can do to a static image to a video clip. So in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to first convert this video layer into a smart object. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on it and choose convert to smart object. Now it's going to bring this out of the video group here. And then I'm going to duplicate it. Simply press command or control J. And I'm going to go ahead and the edit menu and go to transform flip horizontal. Now I want to blend this with that existing one. Since it's on a black background, I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. And now you can see these two lightning effects are kind of blending. It's kind of got a just kind of cool symmetrical look to it. Now I'm not really wanting it to be that balanced, so I'm just going to move this down slightly. So let's have kind of this chaotic thing happening here. So that's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do now is create a new document. Now a really wide format document here. Let's go 12 inches wide by about five inches tall. So it's not super huge, but the wide format is what's important. I'm going to go ahead and press Command I, and that's going to invert the white background to black. Now, back over in this animated um, file, I'm going to select both of those smart object layers. And I'm going to embed these into another smart object. So we're nesting smart objects now. So it's a smart object instead of a smart object. It's that's smart. shocking. That's a smart object inception. It's like, it's like inception, exactly. You know, a dream within a dream within a dream. How many levels deep are we going? Three. Three. Maybe four. Kick them. We might get into limbo, who knows. All right, so I'm gonna take that smart object, drag it over to this uh, document here. And let's go ahead and just make our timeline visible and then you can see the animation is still intact. Now the great thing about putting these video clips into a smart object is that it now lets you treat it like any other object in, in Photoshop. You can warp it, you can distort it, do all these things. So I'm just gonna scale this down and just rotate it so it's vertical. And let's just get it so where it's like that. There. Now, what I want to do is, now, there's the lightning happening inside of the document. Now I want it to travel across this file. So I'm actually going to twirl down the animation properties here. And let's position this file. If I turn the background off, you can see there's that element. So I'm going to take this and position it all the way out of uh, view here. Let's put our playhead back at the beginning. And I'm going to put a keyframe here for transform. So I want it to transform its position from one side to the other side. So I've established a keyframe here in the beginning. I'm going to make it travel for two seconds, and then I'm just going to 
hold down the shift key and drag all the way to the right side. Now you'll notice what happened when I did that, it automatically established a new keyframe in that position because it's gonna go from one side to the other. So if I take the playhead and play it across, you can see now my little lightning effect is traveling across the document. It travels. So now I wanna go to, a, to four seconds and just have it come back. So I'm just dragging it back across to where it was. Now, so now it's going all the way there, and then it comes all the way back. So it's like a Scooby-Doo chase scene. Yes, exactly. Through space. Through, it's, 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 it's the thing. It's traveling. It's, all right, so, so now that's moving pretty good. Now I'm going to select that layer and the layer below it, and again, smart object. So how many levels deep is that now? We're four? That's four. That's oh, four. Are we four levels deep now? Okay. So now let's take this element and put it on an image. So I have this photo of this eyeball here. But it's black. But it is black. And you can see that there's that element uh, traveling uh, across. So you missed, you missed up, Corey Barker. It's if black. we're at the fourth level, so, does this tip, even though it takes a minute, feel like 20 years? Yeah, yes, it's actually, yes, much. it's, it's going to be a 20 year tip. We, so Waiting to die. So I'm going to simply change the blend mode to linear dodge. And now that lightning is visible on my eye. But however, it's still traveling across that linear right. document. So. Since it is a smart object, I'm going to put it back in free transform by pressing Command T and then go to warp because we can warp this smart object. And I'm just going to distort it to the shape of the eye. See, this is why I come up with long tutorials. I come up with long tutorials that teach stuff because I never want to go first before Corey. <laughs> no. Because Corey will knock stuff out like this and then you're like, uh. I never even thought about warping the video frame. Yeah. Again, this is, and this is my point I'm making is that once a f uh, video file is in Photoshop and you convert it to a smart object, you can do practically anything with it. So now it's going to travel across that eye and have this kind of cool. <laughs> Craig just got up and left. <laughs> so now like that's going to gonna travel across the eye and then come back. And then, ooh, there it goes. So it's got this cool kind of lightning effect. Dude, you should make that like your Google Plus profile. Turn that well, into no, an animated Actually, shape. no, you, you, you brought me to my next point. So what? say once it renders and that animation travels across, what I can do with it now is export it as a cinemagraph file. I can actually I go under the file, go to save for web. Now, granted, it's going to be a GIF animation, but it's the only file format that you can set up to loop forever. Mm -hmm. And you can export that as a GIF file, upload it as a, you can actually upload it on your cover photo for Google Plus. Um, and Because it, it does GIFs. Because it does GIFs. And have that animated uh, file as your cover photo right there. So That would, that would be awesome. So dude. I may actually do that um, and you go ahead and post to. it on there. But so, so that's the fun you can have uh, with a video file. Convert it to a smart object. You can practically do anything else you can do with a static Who would have thought that animated GIFs would have been still around <laughs> Who thought, in yeah. 2013? <laughs> Forget <It's>, Flash. <laughs> yeah, Flash left. But the little flaming, the little flaming envelope that goes inside the little mailbox. Yeah, no, the hamster dance still lives. The hamster dance still lives. Still lives. All right, guys. <laughs> we also have another tip. Yet yeah, somebody else, and this is one of the reasons why we're just like, you know, put them in the middle because then everything else doesn't. It's not so good. But we've got a great tutorial from Glenn Dewis. He's going to show us some stuff in Photoshop here. Sweet. <laughs> Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, back in the studio. Well, we actually never left. <laughs> From the last time, uh, if you remember, we saw Glenn, when you, we were in the same clothes. We actually never left. We've been sleeping right here under this desk this whole time because we can't wait to do the next <laughs> tip. That's how much we love it, don't, mm. don't we? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. We love this. We can't, we can't get enough of this. So, uh, um, again, I'm Corey, and I'm here once again with... Glenn Dewis, all the way from England. He's come over here to share more tips with us, and today, we have something even cooler because it's a movie-related thing. <laughs> you know, I just can't get enough of that. So what do we have today? Okay, so we've got a, a, a recent picture celebrating the launch of the new, or the release of the new Skyfall I am, picture. I, am, I love James I am so James excited. Bond. It was such a great movie. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm yeah. such a Bond fan. Yes. So this was just something, this, this was a completely personal thing I wanted to mm -hmm. do. Nothing for, not for any client or anything like that. It was just a bit of fun. So I thought I'd try and recreate in my own way the Skyfall picture. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not going to go through doing the, the whole picture. Mm -hmm. There was just one element of it that I thought would be quite handy to show. Mm -hmm. So this is the final picture that we can see on the screen in front of us here. And this is it going through like the, the making stages, if you like. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing about this picture is we can see he's in this kind of tunnel. And on the right hand side, this tunnel where you can see this rifling effect mm -hmm. is brighter than this side here. But the way he's been shot, 
I didn't actually know that he was going to be kind of in this picture. So right. there's an error on my behalf, if you like. So I need to kind of darken down this side of him here. Lots and lots of ways we could do that, dodging mm. and burning and all that kind of stuff. But that can be quite painstaking to oh, get it course, just right yes, and it can yeah. take a bit of time so mm -hmm. one quick way we can do it is where we've got the cut out of this guy here glenn if i again go down to the effects down here and i can use something called a gradient overlay then we've got this black and white gradient that comes up here and this is really handy because what i'm going to do is change the direction using this angle tab here if you like mm -hmm. so i want the brightest part to be coming from the right hand side so i'll bring it down that kind of direction and we can see how that affects the gradient overlay in here i can also bring my cursor out and drag within here to say how much i want to be dark on the left and how bright i want it to be on the right so that looks kind of like good there mm -hmm. and then I can just change the blend mode in here to something like say overlay and then just lower the opacity just a little bit within here so we can see with that on and off we can see that it's kept bright on the right hand side which it needed to be for here mm -hmm. but it's darkened it down naturally as it goes and even suddenly made those areas a little bit brighter you know, yeah absolutely. losing a lot of detail that absolutely, blowing it out yeah. too much yeah so it kind of fits in which is one of the things with compositing one of the giveaways as you know is, is lighting mm -hmm. when the lighting in the environment doesn't seem to match the person yeah. that's in there as well. So this is just one way that we can do that. And even the very, untrained very eye can look at that and say, you know, there's something not quite right about this image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, and yeah. even if they don't know, they know something's wrong. That's right. They can't put yeah. the finger on it, but there's just something saying it's not right. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's, and, and then another thing, a great about layer styles, and I know you did a, you know, the first time you did a, a trick with a layer style, mm -hmm. is that it's completely non-destructive. That you haven't affected the original pixels on that. So if you decide you know, later, you know, that's not quite right or I don't want to do that, simply throw that layer style away and you back to the original image. That's but, right. And again, you can go back in there and adjust that any time. That's mm -hmm. really great. So ooh, turn the rest of the layers on so we can see the finish one. Oh, the finish one would just go. Now, of course, you did a tutorial actually on how to create that rifling effect. Yeah, how that rifling effect, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. did that. Now, as well. is that on your website? Uh, that is on my YouTube page, and there's a link on that as well. So go to my website, okay. uh, click on the YouTube, and you'll see it's one of the most recent tutorials right, on Right, and if you haven't seen it, my, my screen should be. Can my screen come up this time? Yes, there it is. So, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's glendewisblog.com. Go in there, and you can uh, go to his... Scroll down. It'll be in there, I'm sure. Yep, scroll down and just find uh, the YouTube link. Just search his site. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I'm not, I'm not really... I'm, I'm, I know I'm kidding, but just seriously, go through his site. Look through his portfolio. There's a lot of stunning images in there. Uh, really get some uh, good ideas in there, but definitely check that out. He's got a tutorial on how he created that rifling effect, and it's actually a technique I would not have thought of. Very, very creative stuff. So again, Glenn, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, back to you guys, and we'll see what else is going on. <laughs> That's not right. All right, we want to thank Double O Glenn for sharing his cool James Bond tip with us. That was really cool. Yeah, Pete Collins just turned around and said, the amount of hair actually just grows up exponentially. Then he took a look at my hair and he said, actually not that much. <laughs> I was like, dude, not cool. So, uh, we're going to take a quick break. We got some giveaways we're going to do and wrap up the show. So, stay with us. We'll be right back. Take care. So we are back, and we tried to grab another guest for the for the wrap up of the show, but she's being very reluctant. Over she there. is being very reluctant, and she's like right there. Yeah, we've already put you on camera yeah, once already. Yeah, she's right there. I'm oh, like, it's she's okay. she's just sitting there, and she's just like, no, I'm not gonna go sit back over there. But anyway, but we've well, we've got. Oh look, there she is. Oh, there she hey, is. Hey, there you are. But anyway, we're glad when 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 people come in. Of course, he, you know, he, he found the comfortable chair in the. Back oh yeah, he's there, totally so good. Cheesy back, thumbing it back he, there. He's 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 nuts. He, in the interview spot. So we have some giveaways. We have. That's right. RC's got a couple of prizes right here. What are they? Photo Frame Professional Edition, the perfect way to add textures, edges, and layouts from our folks over at On One Software. Always great stuff. Thank you very very much Absolutely. for that. Mm -hmm. You guys are gonna love that. We also have professional portrait retouching techniques. If you're a photographer and you need to know how to retouch your images and you want to be able to do it faster but still be really, really good, mm -hmm. this is the book. Scott Kelby wrote a great book on that. Thank you very much. A lot to of great Pete stuff Press. 
to Chubby win training and all of those people that are to responsible. win these prizes you will go to kelbytv.com slash photoshop user tv look for this episode which is episode 340 this episode right now wow. is actually the 340th episode of My this show goodness there are worse shows that have been canceled in their first season and yet we're still going we don't know why we're still waiting to wonder why. Don't Order. you mean there were better shows that were canceled? No, there are worse shows that still go. They're, oh, there. There are worse shows that have probably gone longer, Simpsons. But, uh... <gasps> uh <laughs> wow. I can't, I, I can't honestly say that. I've never, I've never really been a big Simpsons fan, so I can't say that for sure. That is not funny, my friend. No. <laughs> I love Apu. I think he's great. <laughs> hey, look, a pickle. So you just go to that episode uh, page and go to the comment section, leave us a comment, question, whatever you'd like, and that basically puts your name in the hat, and we will draw that name at random, and you'll win those fabulous prizes. So we are going to wrap it up. It has been an excruciating 30 minutes. But a but, great end of season. But a great end of season. So we thank you guys for tuning in. We are going to be back, uh, I believe it's going to be early May. We're going to we're going to say early May right now. Uh, we've got Photoshop World in between now and then, which we haven't talked about ah, uh, earlier. Wait, wait, wait. I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to show you. I got to show you. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you want to catch us between now and May, the place for you to do it is Photoshop World. This is a must-attend conference for photographers and Photoshop users. Make sure you come by, guys. It's in Orlando. It's April 17th through the 19th at the Orange County Convention Center. This is a blast. We get so excited about going out to Photoshop World because we get a chance to meet all of you guys. Mm -hmm. If you haven't done so, make this to here. Make of course, sure Orlando first. is the destination because you've got Universal, Disney. I mean, there's just a, and there's a lot of great stuff to shoot there. I mean, there's just everywhere. And yeah, we try and put it. the event where it's going to be a spectacle, where we can- I love uh, it. Basically, dads with kids, it's a win-win. Mm. You say, honey, we're going to Orlando. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, I only bought tickets for you and the kids. I'll be over here, Photoshop mm. world. Have a good time. Right. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, thank you, RC, for joining us for our final episode. Not a problem. Thank and you for having me. Thank you for having me. Mr. Collins. Yep. I think we're about ready for a break. We're all definitely a little punchy. Yep. Yeah, ready yeah. to go, but I appreciate okay. it. We need to Good refresh the batteries, get some new creative ideas. And of course, our special guest in the studio, right back there. Craig. Craig, Craig. McCormick, all the way from Shanghai. Glad he could join us today. And his mother, Allison, over there, who wouldn't join us on the set, but she, we're glad she's here anyway. She's here so. in spirit. Yeah, and by exactly. spirit, we mean seven feet away from us. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you guys next season. All right, bye-bye. Take care.